Okay, now we are looking at payment applications. We've completed a potential change order and a change order. Please note that it is not a requirement to uh, complete a potential change order or change order in order to generate and process a payment application. Uh, it is perfectly okay to have a contract that does not have a change order against it. It's weird, but it can happen. It would be ideal. It would be the most efficient project, right? Uh, but if if I'm just what I'm what I'm just trying to make sure you understand is that the potential change orders and change orders is not a requirement. You don't have to do them in order to generate, but you could just create a contract, create a schedule of values, and just start paying people for work that's being done. The potential change orders and change orders is to say that uh, a modification to the original contract has taken place, and I want to get compensated, paid, or pay somebody out for the work they have done. But by no means is it required. So let's create a payment application. If I hit the plus sign here and create a payment application, I will be given these options. Again, I have to choose the contract I'm paying against. What this does is it tells the uh, system what schedule of values line items am I going to bring into this payment application? So if I had multiple contracts and different schedule of values line items associated with those different contracts, I should only be billing against one contract at a time. Therefore, uh, it bring in the correct set of schedule of values for that particular contract. Luckily, this is very simplistic. We're choosing a single contract. We only have one to choose from anyways. Again, Payment applications typically processed in a manner that is monthly, bi-weekly, whatever the case may be. We're going to pay out for September. Oops. Uh, we should actually pay out for August, but that's okay because we're in the middle of September right now. And and note the name, right? Payment application, right? It is an application somebody is applying for payment they have completed work and they want to be paid for it hence payment application being the name payment period from so this is important to understand is that when you have a payment period you want to make sure that you are paying for a set period of time work that was done in a set period of time I have called this September 2021 payment application therefore I should bill or create a payment application for uh, the entire month of September, September 1st to September 30th. It kind of doesn't make sense because I'm currently, it's September 13th today when I'm recording this. Um, this would be more ideal to generate for August. It should have gone from from August uh, 1st to the 31st because you're paying, you want, you want, you're requesting payment for work done in the past, right? Um, you can't, you, you, you could request payment for work done in the, in the future or present, but it's weird. Uh, no, why would somebody pay you for work that you haven't actually completed yet? Uh, just roll with me in this example. My description here can say something very simplistic. September pay out. To keep it short. Uh, you can add attachments as you need it, as you need to, no problem. Hit the continue button. And as soon as I hit that continue button, what happened was it said, oh, okay, now I know what contract you're looking at. This is a locked field. I cannot change the contract anymore. And then there's other information here that I could technically modify if I needed to. Don't need to. I filled this out accordingly. Uh, we're looking at, these are, these are my original three schedule values line items. And above that are my potential change order line items, okay? So now I can start to, again, build these things because they've been processed and approved through a change order. Otherwise, they would not show up here. So, okay, so we've got the left hand, top left hand filled out. Here in the center, we've got payment application summary. This is where I can start to dial in my retention. We show that we have a 5% retention on this contract. This is just pulling directly from the contract. And so therefore this dollar amount should be 5% of whatever we are going to pay out today. So we can keep the retainage or uh, the owner is able to 
keep money that they need to. Both sides of the payment application contract can fill out and modify the retainage. Uh, an example would be if I am the contractor and I'm working with a an owner and it's a prime contract and I know the retainage is 5%, I could punch in a dollar amount here to reflect my 5% of work that's being done. So let's let's come back to this because I need to figure out how much I'm going to be requesting payment for for this payment period. For this one, I'm going to say we're going to bill out, actually paint to the curb. So we, this would be last. We probably wouldn't do this yet if we're still doing work down below. We have finished the rebar, so we'll do uh, $400 here. As we know, the total is $400. So we're going to bill out 100% of that component. And you can even see that percent this period is at 100%. The next line item that I want to mess with is removing the existing sidewalk. We've done 100% of that work. So that is $2,400. It is possible to do more. If we wanted to type in 3000 we can. What we're doing is overbilling now. And we're saying that there was actually more concrete than originally estimated. Okay, this is a payment request, a payment application. Therefore, you can request this amount. It doesn't mean you'll get it. Somebody's going to have to approve this. And when they approve it, uh, only then will you be expecting to get a check. Otherwise, you know, they're just going to reject it. And you, you know, going to have to revise this, as we'll show in a moment. I'm going to keep this at 3000 just for the heck of it. Uh, we did do additional work down here. We did complete some stuff. We'll say we finished $700 of this. We also finished, uh, I don't know, six, uh, 600 of this. And I'm basing this off of my dollars here. Here's $3,000. So we're going to do, I guess we have to say we finished all of this. So let's do $60,000. Okay. So this is my payment application. I'm currently at $64,700. $100. And we know that the retainage should be 5%. I have no idea what this is. Let's pull up a calculator and find out. So we're saying 64,700 times 0.05. So my retention held should be $3,235. In the future, I'm going to try and illustrate this better to say that this is 5% uh, on the side so we can get an idea or estimate on where what we actually entered versus what was originally in the contract. Retainage release would be if you wanted to pay somebody out, maybe they've finished a major component of work and you told them that you would release, I don't know, $10,000 of retainage on this, I don't know, whatever. And, and so then this would be a subtraction of the amount being withheld. Okay, there is a reload through last button here. This is used if you wanted to refresh the schedule of value screen. Maybe additional change orders have since then been approved. Therefore, you want to see additional items list show up on the list. Or it could be the exact inverse. Maybe a change order was rejected that was originally approved and you want to remove those items from your payment application list. So that is the one of the intents of the reload through last. Uh, it also updates uh, based on a time date stamp. Anytime you were to do a rejection or you need to go back in time, you messed up uh, and you have to fix it, we, we do everything in chronological order, not necessarily numerical order. So what that means is that right now I'm on payment application one. I know that because it's listed up here, it is auto-generated. Um, but maybe further down the road, we have payment five and six happening or whatever. But guess what? Five and six didn't happen in the order that you know we, we created them. Maybe six was approved before five or something along those lines. Then you need to reject these things in the order they were chronologically uh, processed or approved. We do tell our users what is the next payment application that needs to be rejected if they need to go back and fix something. They don't have to guess or figure out when something was approved. So that will make it much easier. Okay, so for now, I think we've got uh, most of the data that we wanted filled out. Let's just quickly, briefly talk about the uh, values up here. We know that the original contract amount was $10 million. This is just information that you would wanna know while you're processing a payment application.
We know that there's been $10,000 or roughly $10,000 and five calendar days approved in change orders. And we know that uh, the, the, the current contract value, the contract through last is now the sum of those. Looking at payment progress, uh, these numbers will have values based on previously approved payment applications. Obviously, what I'm doing here is the very first one, hence payment application number one. Therefore, these are all zero dollars and, and zero percent. But if we wanted to track where we are at, maybe on payment seven or eight, we can go, okay, looking at if, if we did go in chronological order, payment six uh, up to this point has now, we're now at, you know, $45,000 or something, or actually it should be more than that because we're just, this one's for 64. But it'll be, you know, $100,000 or $200,000 or whatever. So you know, kind of roughly progress wise, how far along you are. If it's $100,000 and this is a $10 million contract, you have an idea or, or uh, you know, you can put yourself in a position of knowing where, how far along we are payment wise, right? Um, in addition, you'll start to extrapolate that and say, okay, well, I'm, you know, a million dollars paid, but there's only, you know, 60 days left in the contract. Maybe that would mean that you're very behind schedule, not only in, in payments, but also in time, right? So these tools allow you to get more familiar with your project and know where you're at. You can try and catch things early. So that is what the paid through last is intended for. Retainage held through last, same idea. What are your current retainage helds? What, what, what's the total dollar amount there? Retainage released. If there's been releases, you want to keep track of that stuff. All that stuff is captured here in the top right corner. Okay, so let's update my, my, my draft pay app with these values. Again, I've chosen a value that's greater than the uh, original estimate or the original schedule of values value, which was 2,400 versus 3,000. Uh, and now I can send this out or externally reject, which I'm going to do. As I externally reject, I can fill this in and say, Jane Doe has externally rejected this on today. Comment, it's not the uh, end of the month yet. And uh, you are over billing for, uh, for demolition, which we will not approve. So we can confirm this. Now there's a reason behind why this thing was rejected and we can click on it and generate our revision, right? I can hit the revise button up here. We can do that. I'll just burn through this really quickly. I will continue. It's fine. Okay. So I can go back down here and I can change this to what it's supposed to be 2400 because she said she wouldn't approve it anyways. We've now got two item, two line items out of our group that are 100% billed out. We don't have to think about them anymore if we get this approved. Update. Oh, actually, with that in mind, that changed the dollar amount. Therefore, the retainage held should be a different value, which is 60865 times 0 0.05. 3043.25. Okay. Cool. All right. So now we're holding 5% back, and we can send this for approval or externally blah, blah, blah.